to turn off the camera. This is where we're gonna stop. Okay, uh, first of all, welcome everybody to our weekly Zoom. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna analyze together a 51 unit deal in uh, Texas. Uh, we, uh, we're not gonna discuss, I, I don't wanna get into details about the deal itself because I want us to focus about the numbers and I want us to focus uh, on the Excel and how do we do the Excel. Some of, the, some of you uh, maybe saw it before because I did it a couple of times, uh, but again, this is an evolving Excel, evolving Excel as well. Uh, so we have some changes and what I'm trying to do is uh, usually I have, um, a basic Excel that I'm working with, a basic model that I build over time. Uh, and I added stuff over time. Sometimes people ask me to add stuff and I liked it, so I left it on my Excel. Uh, and what I'm doing it is usually adjusting it according to the deal itself. So it's never the same one, the same basis. If you're gonna look at it, look the same. But in one time you're having, uh, we purchase the property in cash. So there is no loan at the purchase. Uh, on purchase day, and then we finance it, I don't know, two years later. So you'll see, uh, you're gonna see a loan uh, uh, inserted into the deal on year two or year five. Sometimes we have a couple of uh, 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 financing uh, 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 circles that we're doing. So you're gonna see two loans on it. Some of them are all cash deals. So it depends on the deal. But the basis of the Excel that I'm using is the same and then we're doing the adjustment. Now I know that some of you are gonna come and ask me for the Excel later on. Uh, I usually say no, and I don't know what we're gonna do with it again because I think it's very important to try to build it by ourselves. Uh, that give us confident understanding what we did. So if I'm giving you an, uh, an Excel that you just can punch in the numbers, if there is a problem in Excel, you can recognize it uh, versus somebody that know the in and out of how we build and uh, how the formula form, uh, uh, are done and used. And then there is a mistake, you can recognize it and fix it yourself. And if I'm just giving it to you and all you need is just put numbers, if there is kind of mistake and it happened before, then you don't even realize that there is a mistake in the Excel and uh, that can cause a lot of troubles. So I usually say no, but... Uh, I'll reconsider uh, maybe. Um, so just to keep it into co uh, to content, I'm gonna show you the, this is the, uh, the deal itself. So this is a 51, it's in, uh, in, in Dallas, and uh, Dallas, sorry, in Texas. So this is a complex that uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are analyzing now. It's a 51 units. So you have one, two, three, and there is a couple of units here and about 100 uh, parking spots. So this is a deal itself, just so you have in your, in your imagination what we are looking at. Uh, so that in Texas. And then when we receive the uh, uh, data about this, uh, uh, this property, we started analyzing it. And from here, we're gonna move straight to the Excel. Question until now, anything? No, okay, perfect. And again, I'm doing it in, uh, in English. Anybody wants to stop me and ask me a question, even if it's in Hebrew or you don't understand what I just said, feel free to stop me at any moment and ask me because once we're gonna pass, we built its layers of, of stuff. So you miss something, then it's gonna accumulate of lack of understanding the rest of the stuff. Feel free to stop me at any moment, okay. So this is Excel that I'm using uh, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and what we have here is, uh, I'm gonna start with the second tab actually. I'm gonna start with the tab downstairs uh, below and then I'm gonna go to the number itself. So I have several tabs that I'm using. So I'm not gonna have everything on one, on one tab because I don't need all of it at the same time. So I have the assumption, which is kind of my uh, summary of everything. I can see the summary of most of the stuff on this tab. So that's my assumption tab. I have tab uh, which give me, you guys see it, right? Do, yeah. I need to, I, do I need to enlarge it? Because I see Daniel is getting closer to the screen. Do I need to enlarge the, the, the Excel? Yes, okay. yes, a bit, yes, thank you. Just a bit. Yeah, okay. So I have this tab, uh, which is give me some kind of summary of the rent of the ex and the expenses, which we can discuss later on in detail. 
I have one tab which are just the uh, uh, rents. So all the units, uh, uh, in this case, we have rents, we have potential rents, all of that. Uh, I have a tab for the closing cost. How much gonna cost me to close this deal? And in this specific case, I looked at it in two different, as a two different deals. One is a five-year deal and one is a 10-year deal. So I have one tab for five years and I have one tab for uh, 10 years. I have two sensitivity uh, test tabs. We'll discuss that later. And of course I have the amortization because we're going, you're gonna use a loan, we're gonna be financing this. Uh, uh, and I have amortization, how much out of the uh, principal we paid over time, because I'm gonna need this for the calculation of the profit at the end. So I have amortization tab. And let's start from the beginning and we're gonna go over, uh, uh, we're gonna go over the uh, tab. And then there is the first tab that I'm using. I don't have it all the time, but usually when I'm preparing some kind of a memo, like a, a marketing memo, I don't want to put all of this. So I need to summarize it somehow. So I have a, it's called a presentation tab, which basically I take the most important numbers I put in some kind of a, I didn't use it that much here, but uh, I'm putting in, in, in a very short version of all of this, which I can then copy and paste into some kind of a marketing memo. Okay, we're good until here? I'm gonna assume that the answer is yes. So let's see what we have here. Okay, first of all, I have my assumptions about the Excel. Now I want to uh, explain something about the colors as well. Ignore the green because the green is basically for me. Everything that is written in blue is stuff. Oh, one second guys, because I see more people joining, I'm sorry. Uh, Everything that is written in blue is number that I can change in every given moment. And that's gonna affect the entire Excel. Everything that is black, I don't, I don't touch that numbers, okay? I don't need to touch it because it's gonna be a result of something else if I can, if that explains. So we, we're changing only the blue stuff. Okay, everything that is red is negative. It's clear. So when I accept or I send this deal to this uh, Excel to somebody else and they wanna play with it, all they need to do is change just the blue, the numbers that are in blue. They don't need to change all of it. And if they're gonna change the number in blue, they're gonna change whatever they want. And, and, and the stuff that we can change or we wanna change are already marked with blue. Okay, that's a common thing to do when you're working with Excel with somebody else. If I receive it and I know, it, don't touch the rest, just trust the blue, it's gonna change the rest of it. Okay, and you'll see how it works because we're gonna play with it a little bit. Okay, so this is my assumptions and my assumption are the rent gonna increase 5% every year. And the reason that I wrote down 5% every year is this is how I do it. When I issue a list today to somebody, there is already a rent schedule with a 5% increase every year. So I can take it as an assumption because in life, this is what I do. I'm adding 5%, that for existing tenants, okay? So that... I have a question. Sure. If someone uh, rent an apartment for five years, so each year, you increase in, in 5%? Yeah. There is actually on the, when I issue a list, it says your rent today is, for example, $1,000. And it says it's gonna be until August 31st. And in September 1st, 2023, your rent gonna go to 1,050. And then in September 2024, it's gonna go up 5%. And I actually have the numbers on the list. Even the fact that usually I do a month to month list, they have a schedule already in the list. There is no misunderstanding. Nobody come to me and say, oh, I didn't understand that you're gonna increase my rent. They signed on it day one. And is it gonna stop some, in, in some year or it's just gonna increase forever? I, it's gonna increase for 
listen, there is a market and we need to live with the market, but uh, 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 ideally, ideally it's going to increase forever. So I have five years, I, I send them a month to month or whatever it is, five years in advance. Four years from now, I think that they're going to stay. I'm going to issue them a new list with another five years going up 5% and it, I don't, whatever it is, unless the loss is something else. Okay, thank you. Okay. Expenses are more, I don't have much control of it, but since we're doing a long-term deal here, I'm trying to see on what is usually the average inflation, which is around 3%. So now it's a little bit higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower, but we need to understand that we try on, on a normal economy, we try to keep around a normal inflation of about 3%. So this is a number that we are using here for the, uh, 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 the expenses increase. So also expenses gonna go up 3% every year, okay? Since it's a big enough deal, I'm using a vacancy rate of 5%. And that for me, how much of a down payment I'm willing to do. So in this case, I'm willing to put a 5% uh, down payment. I wrote down 5%, then it calculates for me. After that, I don't need to think how much is 5% for 4.9 million dollars, okay? This is a, this section uh, is, I'm using it when I'm going to do some kind of a renovation in the property once I buy it. In this case, the property is renovated already. So I don't need to put any money into renovation. Uh, so I kept it open, but you'll see that I don't ignore it totally. But again, we're talking about a fully renovated property in this case, they're just finishing renovating all the units outside. So I don't think I'm gonna need much money in renovation. So I'm keeping it open for now. And if I'm gonna change my mind, I'm just gonna add the number. So in this case, I'm saying, okay, how many, how, how much money do I need per unit? Let's say I need $10,000 per unit. Okay, uh, how much unit do I need to renovate? So let's say they renovated the uh, 45 units and need only five, it's gonna fill up the rest. Remember that I told you I'm changing only blue stuff. You see already that we calculated how much, it calculated how much it's gonna call me the management, uh, 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 the construction management. It's already added it here. It's already added it to the, con the, the total cost of the deal. I don't need to add it manually. And if I said, okay, I don't need to renovate any of them because I renovated everything. There is nothing to renovate. It's already took it off automatically. Okay. In this case, I have some property information. So we have one property, 55, 51 units. From that 51 units, all 51 are residential units. There is no commercial units and I have the total square foot, which actually should have been in, uh, uh, in blue, but it comes from a different number. It's come from here. So I'm gonna adjust from here, so it's not a big deal. Um, in this case, we gave them an offer, the asking price was $5.3 million. Uh, we gave them an offer $4.9 million. They accepted this deal, they accepted the number. So now I can put this now. So this is not an assumption already. This is an accepted offer. So I put $4.9 million here. It's already calculated to me. How much down payment do I need to uh, come up with? To, uh, it's come from here. Remember we said down payment 5%. It already moved to here and calculated for me how many, uh, how much money do I need to put down as a down payment. There is a closing cost, which is black because we have a tab for closing cost. So we're gonna go over it in just a second. But I know already that my closing cost is gonna be a little bit short on $300,000. Uh, I don't have any due diligence cost. Uh, I don't have any money to uh, uh, to renovate. I don't think I need any money to renovation. There is an acquisition fee. When I'm doing deals, I usually take an acquisition fee. In this case, it's 6.5% of the purchase price. So my acquisition fee is gonna be about $300,000. Uh, and then I'm going back to other funds that I need. I want to have, when I'm buying the property day one, I want to have some money in my bank account. If something happens, I want to be able to pay. So for in this case, I calculated $100,000, what's called an operating capital. I have $100,000 to work with. If something happened day one, 
I don't want to buy a property day one. Tomorrow, uh, an airplane crash on the on, on on one of the buildings, and I need something to renovate. And I said, oh, well, I didn't collect rent yet. I don't have any money. So I'm making sure I have hundred thousand dollars in reserve to operate if something happened in the first couple of days of the uh, uh, after the purchase. Okay, so this is very important because uh, if you don't do that, something happened, and oh, there is some kind of a, a, a a, a miscalculation of something and you don't have some extra, it's becoming an issue because you need to now to, uh, 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 to find a way to come up with some money and that you didn't plan for. Uh, so altogether between the purchase, all the purchase costs, which is $5.5 million and my operating capital, I know that now I need $5.6 million for this deal. The way that I uh, plan to do this deal is to take a loan day one because it's renovated property, it's rented already, there is no reason to buy it in cash. So I'm coming and say, okay, I'm gonna take a loan. The loan gonna be $3.6 million. We're gonna go in just a second to see how I came up with this number, uh, which means that if I need 5.6 and 3.6 gonna be loan, I'm gonna need $1.9 million in equity. When I do a deal, it's called what's called a syndication deal, which means that I'm bringing investor to do the deal with me. We're bringing partners to do the deal with us. And usually the way that we do it is 95% of the equity the investor is gonna bring, the partner is gonna bring, and we're gonna come back, with, we're gonna bring 5%. Now, it's our decision. There is no right and wrong here. So somebody can come and say, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna do 90-10. Somebody else can say, I'm doing 80-20. There is no right and wrong. It's whatever you decide and you can convince investor or partners to join you. And so out of, out of our experience with this type of IRR and this type of deal, we have no problem of selling it at 95 and five. So this is what we put here. And again, if we're gonna come up and get some, uh, 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 some uh, rejection from investor, we can adjust and say, you know what, we'll put a little bit more and you guys are gonna put a little, so I have something to negotiate with the investor if I need. So from $1.9 million that the investor, the, that we need in total, the investor gonna put a little bit over 1.8 and we're gonna put about $100,000. And again, I'm just checking to make sure that I have all the funds and I'm saying, okay, all this together is 5.6. I need 5.6, I didn't make any mistake on the calculation of, a loan and equity. So I'm always double checking myself. The way that we work, we work, what's, we give uh, our partners something called preferred return, which means until they get to some kind of a annual return on their money, we don't split the money. So there is like a waterfall of profits. In this case, specifically, it's seven, uh, it's 7% and then we split 60, 40 with the uh, partners. So this is where I put it in, I'm saying it's gonna be seven, seven, 60% to the investor and 40% to us. Again, there is no right and wrong here. You can put 10%, you can put 1%, you can put zero, you can put 50, 50, you can play whatever you want with it. It's gonna affect how much money the investor and you make and how attractive is the deal for them, but you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, questions? I'm gonna stop every few minutes to ask for questions because it's a lot of numbers and a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of data comes together. So any questions? Yes, I have a question. Sure. Who I, speaking with? Early. I have no idea who I'm speaking with. Katie. Katie, hi Katie. I don't, I, I, hi. Yeah, I don't see all the screens, so just, I don't see all okay. of them. Talk to me, yes, Katie. Uh, what collateral do you give your investors? Sorry? What collateral do you give your investors? I want to focus on the Excel, Katie. If you want, keep that for the end and we'll discuss that. How, right. how from because that's more legal than numbers. And I really want to focus on the Excel and numbers and how we work with Excel. All right. Okay. It's a legitimate question. Let's keep it for, for the end of how from legal perspective, how can we do it, collateral, stuff like that. It's a different conversation. It's a good conversation, so but different. Okay. So Question about numbers in Excel? Uh, no. Yes. Yeah, maybe. 
um, about the the red lines like uh, you have the ds yes it calculated automatically or there is I'll, i'm going to it right now i'll show you yes the answer is yes okay so, so far, all of this is a very simple type of, of, of numbers. There is nothing complicated calculated here. We're going to go into formulas. When, I, when I'm using them, we're going to go to formulas, which I want you to see how, how to use it. OK. When we buying a property, the bank going to look not at the value of the property, and it's going to go on the purchase price. Since the purchase price here is 4.9, that's going to be the value for loan purposes. That's going to be a value of this deal. Is that clear? Okay, even if this property would worth $10 million, since I'm buying it for 4.9, when the bank gonna look at it, when I'm buying it, it's gonna say it's worth $4.9 million. It takes them about six months or, or longer than that to come and say, you know what, now we're willing to look at market value versus purchase price. So when you take a loan, when you purchase a property, it's always gonna be the purchase price, never the actual value, even if you bought a great deal. טל, אין פה, סליחה, זה עופר, אין פה yes. סכנה שאתה הרי לוקח פה LTV, אין פה סכנה שהבנק יגיד לך שעם כל הכבוד למה ששילמת, הוא מעריך את הנכס בארבעה מיליון, ואז אתה יכול לקבל הלוואה יותר נמוכה ממה שתכננת? The answer is absolutely, it's a possibility, absolutely. Happens all the time, about 30% of the time actually it happens, what you're describing right now. So the risk exists. Now it goes back to how severe is the risk. When I'm doing my Excel, I'm trying to be very conservative. So the risk that this is going to happen is very low. If you are pushing the numbers, then there is a very good chance that this is going to happen. Usually it happens by the way with single property house uh, assets, not this type, because this type of asset, the value of this type of asset is calculated based on the NOI. No, there, it's not a comps. How much money does it make? And it's, that is a relatively easy thing to calculate because you know how much rent you collect and you know how much expenses you have. So there is a very, the chances that you are so wrong unless you lied or you pushed it. But if you take numbers face value, this is what it is. This is how much I'm collecting right now. This is how my expenses right now. It's numbers. You just take this minus this, whatever you have, that's your NOI. So the chances is that you are uh, uh, making a mistake, uh, especially if you are being conservative, is very low. You have it when you're doing comps, when you over evaluate properties, when you're taking comps. So you say, okay, my property, I'm going to evaluate it as a fully renovated when it's not. Or when you're doing some kind of a conversion and you say, you know what, once I'm going to finish renovating, I can rent this for a thousand, which is not the reality of thing and you're renting it only for 800. But in this case, this is a fully, re fully renovated and rented properties. We know, we have the, the lease. I know how much it's been rented. I don't need to assume and uh, make any assumption about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, 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 the value for a uh, loan cal calculation is going to be 4.9%. Uh, I put in a punch in a 75% LTV, loan to value, LTV loan to value. So it's 75% of 4.9. And I'm coming up with a loan uh, of $3.6 million, which means for uh, the equity for the purchase itself is $1.2 million. The rate is 6%. This is something that a number that I put. Originally, when I did this Excel, I put 7% because of the market right now. Uh, uh, and the increase in, in, in rates. Uh, and originally, I put 7%. So, of course, my debt service went up. Debt service is a loan payment. So, this is loan payment on a monthly basis. This is loan payment on a yearly basis. So, originally, I put 7%. Uh, and I said, let's see if the deal works at 7% and we can see that the IRR is still 11.4, which is pretty good. Uh, and our debt service coverage ratio, the ratio between the NOI, the net operating income, 
and the loan payment is above 1.2. 1.2 is the minimum that the bank asks you today. If somebody is not clear what I'm just saying, stop me. So the bank wants us to have a ratio between our NOI, our net income, to our debt service about 1.2. So the net income need to be at least 20% above the loan payment. So I see that I have 1.21, so I'm above the minimum requirement by the bank. So I know that I'm good, okay? And I still have a good IRA. I said, you know what? I can do this deal at 7%. And since then we discussed that with the bank and we send them the data and they come and say, no, 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 it's gonna be about 5.5% the interest rate. Uh, so to be careful and I like to be conservative and they said 5.5 and I put six. And I said, okay. So first of all, the debt service, since the payment went down, the debt service went up 1.34. It's amazing, it's a great deal. Uh, IRR are good, I know that I'm good. Now, uh, uh, offer ask a, a great question. They say, okay, what if they don't wanna give you that much of a loan? Since I have that, I can go now down to 70% loan to value, get a smaller loan, it still works, offer. I still have a great IRA. Even if I'm going to do 60% for that argument, and I don't know, I never tried it, so we're trying it together, I'm still good. So I know, and this is the advantage of being conservative, you have discussions, and I discuss that a lot of time, many times. You want to have discussions. You want to have this issue where the bank comes and says, listen, I'm going to give you only three, $3 million. I'm still good. If the bank gave me to that $3 million deal, I'm still good. I'm still have an attractive deal. I have a quick question, Tom. Sure. So in, in long end year one, it seems like loan to value is 75%. But um, looking at the purchase, you purchase it on a 5% down. No, you don't buy it on that. You put a 5% down payment on the contract. At the closing, you still need to come up with equity. Okay. So in the closing, you still need to go yeah, to yeah, that 25%. No, absolutely. This is just a down payment. This is like an earnest money. Okay. That, for, you, for you, it's going to be easier today. It's an earnest money. Okay. Also earnest no, money. No, no. You need Correct. to come up with a lot of money in the closing. That, that's make more sense. Ah, no, no. It's a down payment. <laughs> it's not the equity. It's a down payment. I signed a contract. I put a quarter of uh, a quarter of a million dollar just to like I'm serious about this. Yeah, and just then, so. yeah. And then at the closing, yeah, you need to come up with another uh, for that argument, one point seven million dollar out of your pocket. All right, that makes more sense because this was the missing piece because uh, I was you, looking you for that. that. No, no, the total equity that I'm going to have to come up is that. But if I want to know how much, because I tell you that's going to be that minus, I'm going to add to add. At the closing, come up with another one point seven million dollars. All right, thanks. Okay. Tan. Yeah. The, when you change the the LTV to sixty percent, for example, the meaning for you as an entrepreneur of the of this uh, deal is that you'll need to raise more equity from the investors, right? Absolutely, because you see now it shows one point nine three. Okay. And if I'm going to put, you'll see what is going to happen here. Whatever I'm losing, it's going to add here. And this is what I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Always you change only the blue. You don't need If you build it properly, all you need to change is the blue numbers. Here we go. Yes, I see it. Okay, because what I did here is I said, okay, I need all of this minus the loan, and that all automatically calculates how much equity I need. So I need to change, always play only with the blue ones. Understood, thanks. Okay. So that was law number one. Now, since we are talking about commercial properties, you can finance it every five years. Sorry, one second, guys. I have a question, Neil. Ah, Neil, you asked a question. Uh, Neil, don't do that, just ask. Uh, One of uh, another couple of things that I just put here just so you guys to do is what is the cap rate that I'm buying it on purchase day? What is the price per square foot? And what is the price per unit? 
So I'm buying it at $96,000 per unit, okay? And this is just data for me. There is nothing left to do, but just that for me to have it in my hands to understand what I'm talking about here. Uh, now, since this is a balloon loans, usually balloon loans need to be paid every five, five years or uh, uh, 10 years, whatever you took it. But even if you have penalties, the penalties are usually up to five years. So after five years, you don't have penalties. And because we are buying it uh, and we're looking to increase rent, you want to extract as much money out of it as soon as possible. So the strategy here was to do a refinance after five years. So now we have also calculation of the loan after five years. We're gonna see after that how it goes into the a, a multi-year financial model. And we said, okay, I'm assuming the cap rate in the area is 7%, okay? Now, there is anybody here doesn't know, doesn't understand or doesn't know how value of this type of properties are being calculated. And it's okay to say, yes, I don't know. And I'll explain it in, in, in a second. Anybody? I assume the answer is everybody knows, okay. So I'm using the cap rate of seven, which is relatively high cap rate. There is a very good chance that it can be five years from now only six, which means lower the cap rate, higher the value. So if I want to be conservative, I'm gonna use a higher cap rate. So I used a relatively higher cap rate here. And I use a cap rate of 7%. And from that, I'm sorry, guys, there is another couple of people joining us as we speak. So I'm just going to make sure that everybody is in. Okay, I'm sorry. Tal, a quick question here. Sure. This is Dan. Uh, you don't look like at this point, you don't look at the cap rate that you buy the deal. Like you focus on IRR, but not on the cap rate. The cap rate is an indication for me to how good the deal is. But IRR going to be affected by so many other details during the deal. IRR is will be affected by cash flow during the life of the deal. How much money come in? How much money come out? Corporate just tell you what is the relation, what is the ratio between the NOI at purchase to the to to uh, uh, to how much you buy it for. That's all I all cap rate says. Okay. IRR is such a more complicated a, a, a number to calculate because it's going to be affected by so many more and mainly cash flow, not mainly, it's time and cash flow during the life of the year one, two, three, year one, year two, year three, year four. Did I finance during that year, uh, during this year? I didn't finance during this year. How many, how much money did I use for renovation versus how much money did I distribute it to the investor? So for me, IRR is a better indication to how good the deal is because this is by the end of the day what I'm expecting the investor to get at the end of the day. And this is why you care about. You care about how much headache do I have? No, you care as an investor, as a partner, what you care is, how much money I'm going to end up in my pocket, no? Yeah. Okay. So for multi-year, for me, IRR is the best indication. Does it work or not? Oh, hi. Yes. Uh, hi, Tamir. Um, I'm just trying to understand that uh, you say that if I want to know the, the real price for this project, it means that I should look on the uh, the NOI divided by the cap rate? Yeah, this is how you calculate this type of properties. NOI divided by cap rate equal value. This is not just I calculate, this is how everybody calculated. So when you're gonna go to uh, the appraiser gonna come, it's gonna do the same thing. The bank gonna do the same thing. So, okay, Alma, what is your NOI? What is the acceptable cap rate in the market right now? 6%, great. You have $100,000 divided by 6% for $6 million, great, or whatever it is. Okay, which means, which means that if we want to add value to this project, it means that we should um, load the expenses of the property or the other way, 
the how you said you gonna increase income increasing the income which means it's gonna make the the more value for the property exactly so this is exactly what you do when you buy property buy and all the when you buy an old properties, your objective should be increasing LOI. I'm sorry it looked like I'm looking to the side because your picture on the side of the camera is in front of me. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, but I'm actually looking on you, uh, okay. at you right now. I'm sorry, at you. Uh, that's exactly what should be your objective. This is why I'm against not raising rent because your the value of the property is, 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 is a reflection of your LOI. And if you want to increase the value of the property, what you should be doing is finding ways to increase NOI. So it means everything, like I understand from- Any way you can. Any way you can, that is legal obviously, but any way you can. Yes. Uh, so it's, and be, it can be like laundry, it can be like uh, different services that can bring uh, to add value to the, to the people in the, uh, in the project. And from that point, we can uh, bring more values. So it's gonna give, give us more money. Va value is a complicated uh, term because you can say I can bring more value, which is a community value. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, been translated into money. So when you're talking value, I wanna make sure that we understand each other. Yeah, va value no, value no, is, is a monetary value. We're talking about money. You want yeah. to have, your bottom line needs to be bigger at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about services like uh, laundry, like something like supermarket, or or I heard that people put some some uh, uh, electronic uh, like boxes that people can buy things and to make it like more community uh, places that people can uh, um, can uh, buy things and they want to stay in your property and don't move to other properties. By the way. Absolutely. So you want to you, you want to lower the turnover because that saves you money on renovation and commission stuff like that. So one one thing I agree with you: you want to uh, 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 decrease your your expenses using more efficient uh, uh, appliances, whatever it is. So whatever gas, electricity goes down, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And on the other end, you want to find ways to increase your income, which is. Maybe replace some tenants that pay below market. Maybe increasing the uh, rents for the one that even they are good, increasing the rents or, or finding a way to 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 add the uh, 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 income charge for parking, for example. Okay. Uh, I, for example, in Rochester, one of the things that I did, which it it started as a as a as an experience, but it was so successful that I said. Sure, if it works, it works. And what we did is in New York, the landlord always pays for water. And what we started asking tenants to do, especially new tenants, and then we, we start asking a, 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 an existing tenant when they renew the leases is to reimburse us for water. Mm. So now I'm charging them $34 a month for water charge. So I didn't, my, my rent didn't go up, but my expenses went down. I understand. So you have to be more, more creative to create more, more uh, income. And another thing that we did in Rochester, for example, to, to do exactly what you're talking about right now, we stopped providing appliances. I stopped providing appliances. So I don't need to buy them. I don't need to service them. I don't need to send my guy to check what's wrong with the with the stove. A tenant call and say I stole. I say, okay, call a technician. Tal, isn't it isn't uh, it's offer? Isn't it uh, mandatory to provide the appliances to tenants? No, in New York you need to provide a stove. In New York, in the city of New York, it's a mandatory to provide a stove, but that's it. Okay, good to know. So it depends where you are and different rules, but usually it's a different law than different state. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Rochester, you don't need to provide anything. So when you consider, when you're talking about not providing appliances, are you referring to the HVAC, heater, No, 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 AC, no, 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 no. Make sure that with the appliances, when I'm talking, I'm talking about the stove and I'm talking about fridge, or fridge, stove, stuff like that. Not mm. it, you must provide. Eat and hot water, you must provide. But uh, mm. you, you, you need to provide. You don't need to pay for it, but you need to provide it. 
uh, yeah. but store so so many... top and fridge. Uh, so I don't need to buy them. I don't need to service them. I don't need to. Uh, that it sounds ridiculous, but you know, they call you. Oh, my stuff is not working. Now you need to send your guy to check what it's wrong. It's there. You need mm -hmm. to go. You need to send him to buy a new one. You need to take this one down. You need to take the. This is time and money. You just say that's it. If it's in your unit, it's yours. Congratulations. We just give you a. a you can you can take it with you. New okay. unit. So New units that people moving out. If there is, we take it out. Okay, that makes more sense because um, I was just thinking, if if they already receive it, if it's break, they need to bring their own or take it out. You don't provide yeah, any new one. But if it's existing if, there, it's there. If if it's in the unit, it says on the it says on the list, it's there. But something happened to it. It's on you. I don't I don't deal with it. Yeah, same as in it's on the list. Yeah. I I'm not responding. I'm not fixing it. I'm not nothing. Mm -hmm. by, by the way, um, can I? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, talk, I'm, I'm listening. Gary, uh, what happened if you are looking for uh, a deal and you don't have, um, uh, you don't know exactly the cap rate, something that you... You, 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 you call the appraiser, you call an appraiser in the area asking what is a cap rate. So, so you, and, and you can, be sure that this is the cap rate? Usually, they're not going to lie to you. But usually, it says that. Fine. I'm talking if they have, like, if they don't have any uh, comps from other. They know. They know. Oh. They, they know. Never happened to me. What you're describing is that in the entire city, there is no, nobody knows what the cap rate. Never happened. And when you're looking for deals, they are looking like, like for uh, distressed yeah. deals? Or different story. Let's focus now on the numbers, okay? Let's focus on numbers. Different. So we can ask uh, when we finish. We can go out different questions, but that's okay. 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 So again, we're going back here, and we're assuming that uh, we're assuming that uh, uh, year number year five we're gonna uh, refinance the property. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna close the window because the sun is cooking here. One second, guys. We apologize. Here we go. The sun was. Um, yeah. Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, so you, uh, if I understood you correctly, you're saying that you are not must uh, um, like fixing the, the oven or everything for the renter? Yeah. How come if you're giving them the oven and stuff? Uh, it says on the list, I gave it to you. You just agreed that it works. If something breaks, it says on the list. If something breaks, it's on, it's on you. Okay. But it's only on the appliances, right? Well, yeah, stove and uh, stove and fridge. All right. Okay. Thank you. So I assume here a cap rate of seven, which is relatively a conservative number for, uh, for Texas, where the deal is. Uh, and what we did here, and you can see it over here, basically what we did, it says NOI divided by cap rate. So that's gonna give us the NOI. You see financial model G9. So if I'm gonna go to financial model G9, it's gonna give me NOI, you see NOI. You guys see it? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do NOI divided by cap rate, gonna give me value of $6 million five years down the road. Now, if I'm gonna use a IR, a cap rate, is the value going to go down? If I'm going to use smaller, value goes up. Okay, but I use what I feel is a conservative, relatively conservative number that I feel comfortable, which is seven, and they give me six million dollar in value. Again, I put punched in seventy five percent LTV, uh, which give me a loan of four point five million dollar. Uh, with a, a, it's a 10 year loan uh, with amortization calculation of uh, 30 years. Again, if I'm, I'm, I'm going over thing that I'm assuming you guys know, and if, um, if, if I'm wrong here, just let me know. Now we expect the interest rate to go down in five years, but so I'm making an assumption here. You ask me if I know 100% sure what's gonna happen five years from now, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. But you need to try to make an assumption. So I'm saying, okay, if I'm getting today, which is a relatively high interest rate environment, uh, 
5.5%, I can assume that five years down the road, everything gonna go, uh, everything gonna go well. At least I'm gonna get the same. So I put 5.5%, but again, it's five years down the road. So this is a, it's an assumption. You try to make a smart assumption, but again, it's an assumption, okay? So I'm getting my new debt service coverage. Now, I don't remember who asked about that. The answer is yes. If you want to calculate debt service, which is a mortgage payment, you can go up to formulas, okay? And I'll show you how it's done. We're going to do it here, okay? So I want to calculate again, loan payment. You can go up to formulas and after formulas, you can have, it says financials. You guys see? And if you're going yeah. to go down, there is a PMT. That's what you want, PMT. And when you're gonna click on it, it's gonna ask you a few questions. So the first question is, what is the rate? Now keep in mind, we're calculating on a monthly basis. So the rate will be 6%. I don't need to write 6%, I can click on the on, on 6% divided by 12. Okay. The next question that they're gonna ask you is what is the net present value? Okay which pretty much how many payments I'm gonna do. And since we are doing a three, the amortization is based on 30 years, the amount of payment will be 360. Okay, sorry, 120. Uh, no, sorry, 360. Uh, we're doing all the payments over the years. And uh, it's a 30 years, sorry. And the present value is the amount of the loan that you're taking $4.9 million. And what you are getting is a payment of $29,000. Okay, well, maybe here I did less years. 312 divided by 12, uh, J6. J6, J6, sorry, I did the 4.9, 3.6, I'm sorry. So that should be J, uh, the loan is uh, J, J6, not J4, I'm sorry. I did the purchase price, not the loan. And it calculated automatically. And if I want to do what's gonna be the yearly one, I'm just gonna do that. Well. So the Excel does it for me. Okay. So that's the technical part of it. And I did the same here. And I got a debt service coverage ratio of 1.46. So definitely from that perspective, I'm covered. And now I'm saying, okay, it's gonna cost me to, to get the loan, it's gonna cost me money, okay? So in this case, I'm saying it's gonna cost me about 6%. Maybe I'm gonna have to pay a mortgage broker. There is expenses on the loan. I need to pay an attorney. I need to pay an appraisal whatever it is, okay? So there is, there is a cost to finance stuff. So I'm gonna say the cost of it totally gonna to be about $275,000. I know it might be sound a lot, but it's not that a lot for this type of a loan, okay? I usually charge on a deal that I do, I usually charge what's called a financing fee. So that's a fee for my, because it's a lot of time, a lot of effort to, to get, and pull this all together. So we're charging a, a financing fee. So there is my financing fee. And then, so we have eventually, we have from the financing, I have the total amount, right? Minus the amount that it's gonna get me to get the loan. Minus the amount that I charge as my fee, that's gonna be the net from the financing, okay? Now I owe $3.6 million. which is exactly, it's not exactly true, I actually owe less, but we're not gonna get into it right now because I didn't put the amortization into it. And I'm gonna get out of the financing after paying the loan, I'm gonna have an extra of about $600,000 extra. So far so good? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That? Yeah. When you, when you calculated the loan for, for the purchase, 
you didn't calculate, I didn't see that you calculate the financing fee or the financing cost. So actually, if there are financing to which financing one? Which, costs, which, 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 to which loan? To the first loan. Going the to one be under, that, under closing costs, you'll see it. We didn't get to it. Yet. Ah, okay. Because I, I because, because that it, is leaves, money that it I leaves you less money, which means you need more equity. That that because I'm gonna need that up front. Here okay. I'm getting it out of the loan itself, and on the other one, I need it up front, so it's calculated as part of the closing cost. Okay, thanks. Okay. You're right, but I did calculate, we just didn't get to it yet. Okay, we are, oh wow, we have a, we are an hour into it. Okay, uh, let's speed it up. So I have debt, I have net from financing. So I'm gonna finish the deal, the financing with an extra of about $594,000, which then I'm gonna have to do something with it, which means I'm gonna be able to pay back some of the equity to the investors. So since we split, we, we put down 95 and five, we are splitting it 95 and five, and basically the investor gonna get back 564 out of the $1.8 million. And we are as a managing partner gonna get about $30,000. And that means that they're gonna stay, gonna live with the deal. They're gonna still have in the deal $1.2 million. We're gonna have $67,000, okay? Now I'm gonna leave the cell one second to the end, and then I'm gonna go, we're gonna come back to it. Okay, so let's leave that. The next thing that we, we wanted to do when we started doing it is to punch in the numbers and to see, okay, how much rent do we have here? So, so there is so many of them, we had a tab by itself. Basically what we did is we entered all the rents that there is right now. And next to it, what we did is I put potential rent because some of them are below market value. So you see, you can see that some of them already rented uh, for 990, okay? So we know this is a potential rent for it. This one, 12, this is a three, but some of them are still at 795, 900, uh, uh, 850. So I have what's called an upside. I can increase rent. Are we agreeing on it? Okay. Yeah. So I know going back to Amir, what you asked, I know that one of my first thing that I'm gonna have to do while once I bought it during the first five years is to try to see how do I bring rent to market rent. That's gonna be the main objective of our, of our job once we purchase it, okay? And I took the- Alex, Alex, this, this, is a, this is a property with no vacancy? It looks like some, everything is a uh, red. There, there is a vacancy here. Vacant, 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 vacant. And there is another vacant here. I know that they rented some of them. But some the column, the column E, doesn't it reflect a, or I missed something, the current uh, rent that, that you can, that you get? I didn't understand. Sorry again. Uh, column E. Isn't it reflect the... Yeah. Follow me is the current rent, G is potential rent. So how how is it vacant if it pays rent now? No, it doesn't pay rent. I'm saying this is what, if, if, if they're renting it right now, all of it, this is what it's gonna be. Ah, okay. Okay. I thought it was potential. Yeah. Okay. And, and this one, what will be if I'm gonna convert all of them to market rent? Okay. So okay. you don't have... Do you have actual? So isn't it supposed is to be actual. column E? This is so actual. it's an actual in column V when you have the vacant, you should be zero. Uh, yeah, is that what yeah, I yeah, 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 Yes and no, and I'll explain to you why. You're right and, and you're right and you're not and, and not. Uh, when I did that, I wanted to see what will be, uh, what will be, uh, first of all, there is no many of them. There is, I think eight of them that are, when I received it was, since then they rented most of them. Oh, okay. So even if there is two or three of them, anyway, I, what I did is to compensate for it. When I went to the financial model, I put eight percent here. Okay, so I compensated it on on somewhere else. I just put a vacancy rate higher. Okay, 
So now that I took all of this, what I did is I went down to rent and expense and said, okay, here we go. We have all of this. We have $46,000. You see, this is what it is now. See, 46 now. And I had the expenses. So I went and we start checking and we said, okay, we have real estate taxes. We have insurance for the property. There is water charges. There is maintenance, which is calculated per unit. So we said 700 per unit. We have 51 units. It's going to be about $35,000 a year in maintenance. Okay. And there is gas, there is electricity over there. The tenants pay most of it. So it's not such a big number. Uh, we're not going to need the super or supervisor because we're going to, it's going to go under management. So we're going to charge 7% management over there. All that what's going to have to be. Uh, there is a refuse. Refuse is garbage disposal. Okay. Commercial properties usually is the owner pay for it. So there is a fuse. There is legal and accounting. This is something that a lot of people forget to see, to put on financial models. You need to have accounting. You need to have uh, uh, legal uh, services. So you want to have it taken care of and, and calculated. Uh, so I said, okay, I have operating expenses of about $175,000 a year. We charge a management, a deal management, which is half a percent a year, which is $24,000. I'm calculating that I'm going to keep another 5,000 as reserve, which is a reserve to if I'm going to have to do some kind of a renovation. So I'm putting a reserve every year, $5,000 extra on the side to keep that uh, uh, as a reserve. And I'm going to have that I'm going to have a total expenses of about $203,000. And uh, why didn't you take any contingency? Uh, you can take, either take it under that or don't Yeah, but it's not, it's not the same. This is for innovations, right, right. mainly. No, the CapEx is for innovations. I agree with you. That's for renovation. But don't forget that I already starting with $100,000 in, 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 in... Ah, that you put aside for the operating capital, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm starting with $100,000 Yes. Put aside hundred thousand dollars for all of these edicts. Okay. But I have a question about the insurance. The sorry, the tax. Yes. Um, if you could go back to the yeah. Um, so over here you calculated about a, a bit over half half of a percent. From you, you, the, one second. Do I have no audience? I see another guy sitting on the back. <laughs> Come closer. Yes. I need to start selling tickets. <laughs> um, so uh, I wanted to ask how how did you calculate the tax here by the current so tax that you saw I in took, the county, or I took the, it will probably I, go up once once you buy it and they saw that. You so buy, I took you I, it for I, I took the current tax. You can see it over here. The total current tax is about twenty eight percent, twenty eight thousand dollars, and I already added five percent to it. Um, don't you think it's going to go up higher once they saw, like, let's say now they, they value the property for uh, two million or so, uh, and then you buy it for five? Um, yeah. Isn't it going to go higher, way higher? Maybe. The answer is maybe. You do an assumption. It, mm -hmm. You might be right, but this is the point of doing an assumption. And then there is also my sensitivity, and we're going to go to sensitivity on expenses, and I'll show you. So you might right. be right. You might be right. I already tried to put some, some of it into it. Did I put all of it? I'm not sure. I can't, I, I, I don't really sure. I can do one and see if so it's gonna go another thousand dollars up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um another question. Um but the... then you can ask, does 10% is enough? What is gonna go 15%? No, I thought it's gonna go like uh double or so like to be around around two percent of the of whatever you bought it for the purchase price. That's, that, that's part of our due diligence on our due diligence when i'm doing a deal just in general guys you know i don't do deals that i don't have due diligence period okay i don't do that if somebody said i don't give you time to check your numbers it's a it's it's a deal breaker for me personally it's a deal breaker if i'm paying five million dollars i need to have a couple of days to check the numbers Okay, so when we do something like that, the one of the things that we do, I did it in Iowa when we did the Iowa deal and everything, 
I got that there. You, I called the assessor and I said, okay, talk to me, explain to me what's gonna happen. So it's a good question, Daniel, but that's part mm -hmm. of the due diligence. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, another question would be about the LLC management. So that's half a percent from the purchase price. Purchase price? Yes. All right. And where is the uh, property management here in the... Okay, thank you. Sorry, I missed it. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Uh... What is the refuse for? Garbage. Garbage. Okay. Sorry. Garbage. Refuse is garbage disposal. It's a funny word, but this is how they call it. Okay. Uh, so now that I have the expenses and I know how much is the rent, I can calculate in OI. So I have PGI, potential gross income. I have my vacancy. I have expenses, right? I have, sorry, I get into EGI. EGI, effective gross income. Potential gross income means how much money I'm going to collect if I'm going to collect all the rent all the time? 100%. So it's going to be $555,000. Vacancy means, okay, how much I'm losing on vacant units, which is going to be about $27,000 a year, which in my effective, the actual number that I'm expecting to collect will be the effective gross income, which is $527,000. From that, I have $203,000 in expenses, which bring me to a NOI, net operating income of $324,000. Tal? Yes. Um, do you take the turnaround uh, cost of uh, new tenants as part of the management, as part of the uh, CapEx, as part of, because I didn't uh, see. Cost part of vacancy. It's part of vacancy. It? It's quite a vacancy. But vacancy, but vacancy is the rent that you don't claim, that you, you don't have a, a, an option to claim. But yeah. it doesn't reflect it the does. cost, of the, the money that you have to, to take out of pocket to, to find new tenants or to renovate the uh, units for them. Uh, really, replace it, carpet, replace it, uh, flooring. It, it, not necessarily. Again, it depends. it's a number. You need, as long as you take the number. You need to understand that when I'm talking about 5% 5, 5 vacancy, what does 5% vacancy means? It, mean, it means that 5% of the units are empty. That's okay, wrong. so what? Vacancy, vacancy goes like this. I have 51 units. Each unit have 12 months rent a year, which means that I'm having every year 612 units renting month for this property. And if I'm taking 5% vacancy, that means that every month, every year, I'm gonna lose 30 unit, 30 months of rent, summer, okay? Now I have 51 units that are fully, 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 uh, 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 let's say it's fully occupied, okay? Yes. How, many, how many units I'm gonna lose on a fully renovated building? How many units, how many tenants gonna move every year? Give me a number. I have no idea, five. Five, so let's say you have five units, five people, five people mm. moving in. How many months it's gonna take me to rent it back? Between half a month to one uh, to one two month. month. Two months. Two. Okay. So and ten I'm months. You have to pay commission three. I understand. So, so three I'm months gonna, I'm, times I'm, uh, five, I'm which is fifteen uh, months. It's but going I already, to exactly. But I calculated for myself. Thirty months. Okay. 30. So you have you have uh, you have this contingency of uh, fifteen months to yeah. make renovations or whatever you need. I understand. So, so, so that's to, to make, to pay, to pay commission, to pay that, to pay that, whatever it is, okay? Okay, understood. That's 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 Make sense? Yes, it is. Everybody understand what I just explained to us? Yeah, but why did you say three months? Two months to find a tenant, one month's commission. I lost three months of rent. Got it. Okay. And I still have 15 months spare. 
And in your financial model, like the fact that you lose one month, like you pay one month commission for the management, do you take it under consideration other than a vacancy or just in a vacancy? I, I put it in a vacancy. You want to put it separately? It's a legitimate, yeah. uh, it's a legitimate thing. I put it as part of vacancy. I just use I, higher than common vacancy. Yeah, and initially you need to pay a management company one month of rent for the first year? What? No. I really understand the question. What do you mean do I need to pay? Right now. Management company collect 7% of what rent they actually collected that, that month. He's talking yeah. about finding a tenant. Did they charge you for a month, a full month to find a tenant? That's what the third month is. Yeah. Once yeah. a tenant, you pay a commission on one month, one month. In the beginning, once they get like a charge of all the bills, they don't take any for the first month, you know, no. just to. They don't take any, they don't take any. Uh, it's very hard to hear you, uh, Dan. Uh, they don't charge you something in advance, if that is a question. Yeah, thank you. The units are already re uh, allowed to your question. The, this units are already renovated. This property, it's already fully renovated. So I don't need to calculate anything about renovation wise. Okay, a lot. Is that was a question, fully renovated property. Uh, so now I have my NOI and I have my expenses and I know how much money I need. What I'm gonna uh, go with it is to my financial model and I'm gonna focus on the 10 year ones because this is what we wanna do. So I'm saying the first year, since I have a little bit higher vacancy than usual, I put 8% instead of five, which you already agreed that five is more than enough, but I put eight uh, for the first year. And I'm saying, okay, this is my rent. And it's gonna go from year one to year two. It's gonna jump a little bit because I'm gonna to try to replace as many tenants as possible during the first year. So I didn't do fully, I'm not gonna get into exactly how much how I calculated it, but that reflect a, a, a replacement of some of the tenants, not all of them. A, and from that on, it's going up 5%, like our assumption here of rent increase, okay? From that, there is a vacancy that we are losing, which gave us the EGI. Expenses go up 3% every year. Remember that we said, I just, I just dragged it. I said, it's going to be C8 times 1.03%. Okay, one point, uh, going to go up 3%. So that goes up, and I just drag it along uh, the years. And then that's going to give me the NOI for every year for the next 10 years. So far, so good? Let's say the answer is yes. Okay. Now I have the debt, ser the debt service. So we know what will be our loan payment for the first five years, right? Because we calculated it over here. So all I need to do is to drag it here and I have it for the first one, two, three, four, five years, I know what might gonna be my loan payment. And that's gonna give me my cash flow for the first five years. After that, I dragged the second loan and that's gonna be the next five years one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Do I need to make it bigger? No, no, we can see it. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Sure. So now I have my cash flow for the next 10 years. And remember that I told you the first payment will go to the investors. And up to 7%, they're gonna get all the money. So before we start splitting profit, they need to get to a minimum of 7%, okay? And what we can see here, because if I'm gonna go back here, we see it. they put $1.8 million, which means 7% of it gonna be $128,000, which means the first $128,000 gonna go to the investors. And what we can see over here is that the first year we don't have 128. So all $43,000 is gonna to go to the investors and return wise, 
they're gonna make 2.4% return on the year on, on their money on the first year. After that, that we stabilize it a little bit, we jump from 43 to about $97,000, still below 128, still everything goes to them. Now, how do the Excel know to do this calculation? We using something called if function. Excel know how to have options and it's called if. So if something happened, that happened, but if it's not, something else is gonna happen. And in this case, what it says, it says that if C12, if this is bigger than this, write down $128,000, but it's not, give it all to them. So it says if C12, if this is bigger than $128,000, write down $128,000. But if it's not, give everything to them. If somebody don't know how our if function on Excel works, this is the most brilliant things to learn and it should go and Google it and see how if works because that makes life so much easier. Because now you don't need to do it manually you teach the Excel to recognize different situation and react to it. When you, when you choose a function if or any function, the Excel itself shows you what parameters you should put in and explains the function. I, I, I determine. I determine to it. When I do yeah. a if function, I determine what of is course. the condition. It shows you the logic. It shows you yeah. what, what kind of logic you can use. And it's very simple. Yeah. So if function, if somebody, there is anybody here that doesn't know if function in Excel, it's a must. When, do, when working with Excel, it's a must. Learn how to work with if, it's gonna make my life so much easier because now it reacts automatically and you don't need to do it manually. I see that you have a questions. Let's see what the question is. Oh, sorry, can talk, okay. Uh, hopefully I answer your question a lot. Uh, okay, so what we're using here is we tell the Excel, if there is enough to pay them the 7%, give them the 7%. And if not, give them everything. And that's exactly what the Excel did here, here, and here. Over here, we passed 128. We teach the Excel to give them the 128. And then we teach this uh, 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 section to say, if there is any leftovers, give us 7%. And then we told this section, if there is any leftovers, from the leftover, give them 60%. And if we teach this section to say, if there is more than that, give us 40%. So and now, for, what? And from year five, you, you prefer the decrease because you return part of the equity, right? Yeah. You ask why I get the preferred? No, no, no. From year number five, from since year you number made five, a, yeah, because yeah, since because you made the refinance and you you yeah. gave back part of the equity, so the preferred is equal to uh, yeah. to eighty nine two seven two now. Yes. Okay. It went down because I gave them. I gave yes, them over here. Yeah, over here we returned five hundred sixty four thousand dollars out of the money, which means now they have an equity only one point two. Preferred goes down. Great. Okay, now it's only eighty nine thousand dollars. Okay. So now remember that we said that year number five, we have a leftover of uh, six hundred thousand dollars, which five hundred sixty four going to go to the investors. So years are also going to get on top of the cash flow from rents they're gonna get another $565,000. And in total, the investor gonna get it in year number five, that's the expectation, a little bit over $700,000. Can you show the chart in full, please? That works.
Going forward, as Offer mentioned, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate everything based on the new equity, which is a decreased equity, 1.2 and $67,000, okay? So basically everything from down, going down here, you see that would plot from 128 to 89, that went down from 67 to 46, but this split doesn't change. So they're getting less here, but more on this part, okay? So what we have over here is we calculated how much investor gonna get from cash flow from the deal itself, from rents, and how much the management gonna get, which is us. Also over here, we calculated, and we're gonna get to the sale in just a second, how much money gonna come from sale and uh, from the sale or the financing. And this is how much total the investor is are gonna bring in or gonna get out every single year, okay? Let's go back to the sale one second. So the sale we are planning to do on uh, year number 10, assuming that we're gonna sell it, said, okay, how much the sale gonna be? How much can we sell it? And it goes back to market value. And market value is NOI divided by cap rate equal value. So we took the NOI, and we said again, let's use cap seven. And we took the NOI and we came up that 10 years down the road, we estimate the value at $8.6 million. Now to sell a property, there is a cost to it. We need to pay for commission. We need to pay for the attorney, whatever it is. So it's gonna cost about $600,000 to sell it. Uh, again, if it's gonna be less good for us, but again, I'm trying to be conservative and we're gonna get net out of the sale about $8 million. Now, during this five years, we pay the mortgage. So we build equity into it because we pay the principal, right? That's called amortization. We pay during these five years, $277,000 in amortization. How do we do that? How do I know that? Because I have a amortization schedule. An amortization schedule is something very easy to build. You can go Google it, very easy to build. And basically it says, if you're gonna put what is the interest rate for how many years and what is the loan amount? If you're gonna calculate how many months you have, in this case, 60 months, we keep it for five years, 12 times, uh, five, 10 times 12, 60 months, you're gonna pay, it's actually higher. I put by mistake this one, but it should be this one, $346,000. So you actually helped me find a mistake here. And this should be, here you go, guys. It's actually gonna, even be better than I thought. Three other than I'm gonna fix it, you see? So I pay amortization $346,000. I have the debt of 45, which means I'm gonna clear after debt $3.7 million, a little bit over $3.7 million. Now, first of all, I want to return the investor the money, right? They put the money, they should get it back. So from that 3.7, I'm gonna give the investor $1.2 million, a little bit over $1.2 million. And I'm gonna end up with $2.5 million. From that 2.5, we're gonna return our equity. And we're gonna end up with $2.4 million. And since from that, the investor should get 60%, they're gonna get $1.4 million, we're gonna get 9.7. And in total, the investor gonna get $2.7 million. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put $2.7 million, which means at year number 10, we're expecting the, uh, uh, the investor to receive something a little bit shy than $3 million. And when I'm gonna take every single cash flow negative at the beginning, but positive the rest of the year, and I'm gonna calculate IRR. IRR is also a formula that you can find under financial formulas. And basically what you do when you wanna do IRR, you just click IRR and drag all the values of the cash flow. I don't know what it gave us so high, but it shouldn't be so high unless I'm making an even a bigger mistake, IRR. Ah, because it's added one to the other. I'm sorry, I apologize. It's gonna be now even there.
I'm going to give us IRR of 12.3 percent. IRR represent uh, capital as return on an annual basis, which means looking at the entire deal, beginning to end, is, uh, it's not average, but because it takes time into calculation, it's about 12, it's equal to 12.3% a year on the money, return cash on cash, okay? So we got to 12.3%, okay? So I'm saying, okay, if my investor on this kind of a deal get to 12.3%, that is an attractive deal. And this is for me, the best indication if I wanna do the deal or not, how much my investors get in. Because if they're not gonna be attractive enough for them, they're not gonna to want to do it with me. Right? Make sense? Make sense? No, make sense. Makes sense. Okay. I'm going to assume it makes sense. Okay. So when I'm looking at the deal, if somebody asks, one of my, my first thing is how, how, how much money can I pay the investor down the road? I want them to be willing to do it. Daniel, I owe you okay, closing costs. All my closing costs is something that I want to know how much money I need to come up day one. So I'm going to say, maybe I'm going to take a mortgage broker and I'm going to have to pay him 1%. So that's going to be $36,000. Then I have another loan expense of about 3%, which is going to be another $110,000. There is a title insurance, a little bit less than 1%. That's going to be about $40,000. I'm going to have legal fees of about $20,000. I need to open a LLC, it depends what state, but I usually put $800,000. Usually uh, other state in New York, it's a little bit less than that, but still it's better to be higher than lower. So open a new LLC is gonna cost me 8%. There is some small fees, wiring fees, stuff like that. I'm gonna have to pay, if I'm taking a loan, the bank gonna ask me to pay all the taxes a year upfront. So I'm gonna need about $30,000 to pay all the taxes a year upfront. So that's gonna be about $30,000. I'm gonna to have to pay the insurance here up front. That's gonna be $45,000, $46,000. And I have another contingency offer. You ask about contingencies. I'm giving myself another $10,000 here as a contingency, which means it's gonna cost me to close this deal about $293,000. What, what is the the other loan expenses are comprised of the three percent because it's a huge sum of money. Yeah, first of all, you have when you uh, uh, you open uh, you open uh, uh, you open a case with the bank, you need to pay them a fee. There is all the legal fees. They can ask you to do uh, environmental, which is phase one, two, three, depends on the property. Uh, appraisals, uh, whatever the bank asks. All these things accumulates and it accumulates very fast. Yeah, very, very large number. Thanks. I, I agree with you. And I want to have a large number on the model and find out that it's less. Of course. It, it's a much more, more disappointing to find out that you put 50 and it costs you 70. Okay. I always want to be on the safe side. And sometimes I'm too safe, I'm okay with it. If the bank's gonna come and say, Tal, don't worry, but it's gonna cost me only one, one and a half, great. Right. I have extra money, I'm gonna give it back to the investors. I never heard about the investor that told me, don't give me money back. So when I'm doing this, I'm being careful, super careful. And then if I have extras, great, good for me. Makes sense. Okay, so I know that it's going to cost me, and you see, it because what, by the way, this is something very to pay attention to. A lot of people miss this part that the bank asks you to pay everything in advance, and then you find out that you are seventy thousand dollars short of what you what, what is it here? Seventy five thousand dollars short of what you need. When you're taking a loan, the bank going to ask you to pay taxes and insurance a year in upfront, so you need to show up to the closing with uh, at least one year of rent, of uh, insurance and taxes paid. I assume that the- What? The, I, should, I assume that the, the number for the insurance is based on a quote that you receive and not just an estimate that you- So this is what they have right now and I'm waiting for my insurance guy to confirm it. 
So I okay. already sent it all the data again, going back to due diligence. Uh, I based That's it right. on what they gave me at their current insurance, but I'm not taking it as face value. I send all of this data to my insurance guy and I ask him, go give me and get me a quote. So if you're gonna come yeah. and there is a quote that is different than that, I'm gonna have to change the, the model based on it. But I think I have enough cushion here that if you're gonna come with another five, ten thousand dollars, not gonna change much. No. And if it comes lower, it's more icing for you. Okay. So that on the closing cost. And now we're gonna to go to the last two because oh, okay, and then I'm gonna have some time for a question. And this is something, by the way, that one a potential investor came and said, Tal, how is it that you don't have it on your model? And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. And I added it. Uh, she's very nice. She's also family. She never joined the deal. But since she asked for it, and she's a very sharp lady, uh, since then I have it on all my models. It's a sensitivity test. And sensitivity test, the, the, the purpose of sensitivity is to see what will happen if I miss something. And there is a big shift of a mistake here and there. What's going to happen to the deal? So the first sensitivity test is for the rent. What will happen if rent is going to go up or down 10%? And it says, if the rent, this is what we're expecting the rent to be. If it goes down 10% of what we're expecting and the expenses stay the same, I'm going to a cap of 6%, which is I can live with. And if it goes up 10%, I'm at cap nine, which is great as well. So I'm not dropping here to a number that I can accept as an acceptable number. I still have an NOI of $300,000. It's a doable deal even if I made mistake. And 10% on 10% on, 10 on these numbers is a lot of money. This is not 1,000 to 900. This is $550,000 to about five. So that's a lot of, it's a big mistake to make. So I'm saying, okay, can I live with that? And the answer is yes. I said, okay, now it's not such a big deal if something happened. The other sensitivity test goes back to what happened if expenses goes up or down 10%. And you need guys to understand, going up one shot 10% to all of the expenses, that's a big difference. This is not minor difference. So I'm saying, okay, what if the variation, if it, if it goes back uh, in 10%, so that we're expecting it to be 209. If it goes down 10%, I'm at cap eight. If it goes up 10%, I'm at cap seven. Still numbers that I can work with. So for me, on my sensitivity level, 10% here and there mistake still make it a good enough deal to do. Of course, if it goes up, great. But even if there is a mistake down and it's gonna cost me more or I can collect less rent, it's still a doable deal that worth doing. So my sensitivity test tell me, okay, you are good. And I know it because I can, I can feel it already when I'm doing the number that I'm not gonna have an issue. Because if I come to you today and say, listen, do I eight cap deal in, in, uh, in Texas today on a fully renovated, everybody gonna grab this deal. Okay. Question, guys. Ladies, ladies, let's start with ladies. Guys, whoever. No questions. It was so clear. No questions. Okay, perfect. I have a question. What? I have a question. Sure. Um, the cap rate in in a city um in what i assume it's not like let's say you calculated the cap rate seven uh, in, uh, in 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 the area of the property um is it a given a uh, data or every lender has its own cap rate like this lender would say yeah in a uh, in Houston, I would give you, I will calculate value of, of properties according to cap seven and another lender would say according to- No, the they're gonna, they, it's, usually if it's a normal bank, they're gonna work based on the appraisal. So the appraisal, it's a, it's a market thing. Mm -hmm. It's not that, 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 what the bank usually gonna play with is with your LTV. Okay, 
going to say, but, you know what, uh, we're not going to give you more than 60% LTV. In this case, by the way, we, we got the proposal for 80%. I'm mm -hmm. at 75. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, usually the bank not going to say, okay, uh, I'm calculating it best. It, the bank doesn't calculate. The bank yeah. go, go to uh, uh, an appraiser say, tell me how much it worth. And the appraiser mm -hmm. is going to do whatever the appraiser does, which is market. Okay, uh, so so that, that's another question. The appraisal, when he calculates it, does he use a cap that is like, is it like a, a data that I can find, you know, go on the internet says, what's the cap rate in Houston? And this is the number? Or every appraisal would like- No, no, know, no, it, yeah, it's an acceptable number in the market. So they're gonna come and say on this cap of a fully renovated property is gonna be six, seven, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you're going to come and say, okay, listen, the, uh, this property there, it should have been six, but since the property need renovation, I'm going to do some kind of an adjustment and I'm going to drop it, the value. But the mm -hmm. carpet is a carpet, so you can Google and say, okay, what is the acceptable market? What is the acceptable carpet in the area? Or call in a presence, okay, what, what's going on right now? Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that if you're talking about Houston, you're talking about probably somewhere around five or six, or probably yeah. somewhere around six. Yeah. Got yeah. a question? Yes, talk to me, Bill. Um, how does an inflationary environment affect your numbers? Do you put them somehow? Do you refer to that? And how does your uh, investors look at that? So basically what we do is, that goes back to my expenses, the sensitive and expenses. Okay, what will happen if I'm wrong by 10% here and there? So let's assume that I'm wrong and my uh, expense is going to jump 10% in the next whatever it is. Okay, I went from 209, my, my expenses, my expected expenses, which is 209 went down, went now to 230, I'm still at cap seven. Still at cap seven, I can live with. Now, what happened a lot of time is that the investor comes here, okay, Tal, tell me what happens if, uh, oh, it's inflation right now and your interest rate uh, is not 5.5, five, it's going to be 6.5. And this is why I have an Excel. I said, yeah, no problem. Let's do it together. We went down to 11.8% return on your money. If I build the Excel conservative enough, it can absorb it. If I'm pushing the number to the limit, it's very sensitive. But I do exactly the opposite. And what I'm trying to do is say, okay, my objective is for this deal, every deal that I'm doing, the objective when I look at it, it says, if everything crashes right now, it's Armageddon tomorrow, will this deal survive it? Because I'm buying it not for today, not for tomorrow, I'm buying it for the next 10 years, no matter what happens. Good or bad, this deal need to work, no matter what is market uh, uh, condition. Of course, I'm not talking about something super extreme, okay? But I'm saying, Assuming what we saw in the last, I don't know, 20 years, will this deal gonna be able to support itself for the next 10 years, even market goes up, market goes down or, or whatever it is. So I'm trying to be super, super conservative. And if it works now and it works in a relatively higher uh, interest rate, relatively higher uh, vacancy, uh, and I have enough cushions, and we talk about cushions again and again and again, my feeling is that it can work. I say, you know what, let's go to, I told you originally I did this, this model at 7%. I still was at 5.6. You know what, I can get a loan. I'm gonna need a bridge loan. So bridge loan gonna be 8% or 9%. For the next two years, I'm gonna need bridge loan and it's gonna cost me 5% to get it. I'm still at 9%. 10%, 10% IRR. And it's, I have enough cushion to absorb all of this crap that might not gonna work. Uh, I had a question. Sure. This is a, a non-recourse um, loan or recourse? I take only non-recourse. I personally take only non-recourse loan. Non-recourse. Yeah. Give me your non-recourse. I, I take only non request loan. I take only non request loan. And you hold this property for five years? My my, my, my objective is 10. At least 10. 10. At least 10. So if 
So if the investor wants the money after three years, five years, you... Whoever comes into this deal is for me with the road for the next 10 years, unless something crazy happened, you know, life happened, but the... the... So, so, and, and... This is a buy and all. This is a, a long-term deal. So whoever comes and decides to do this type of deal with me, Usually I tell them, listen, we, this is what our expectation. We want to hold it for 10 years. If it works for you, great. And if it's not, that's fine with us as well. But keep in mind, what we do try to do, and again, that has nothing to do with Excel. What we try to do is putting into the agreement some kind of ways for personal, for specific investor to come out, something happened. You know, life happens, 10 years is a long time. So we want to give them some flexibility if they need to come in and out during this period of time. But I want to do something with you, Dror, now, because you tell me now I'm going to push it to totally limit. Let's say I can get a loan. Let's see what happens. Ah, nice. I don't have a loan for the first, first five years. I bought it all cash. That is a cushion. Requires a lot of money. But by the way, the, no, I did a mistake. Sorry, that's, uh, that, that's not the right one. That's going to be this one. If I need to buy it right now, all cash, I'm still at IR of 9%, which is an acceptable deal on every, on, the, on, on it's an acceptable deal. Now I owe, I owe, I owe, I owe, okay, let's do that. Uh, I asked somebody asked me about the, about the Excel and I said, uh, and I said that I'm gonna answer it then. Who asked me a question about the Excel? I have another question about the Excel. Sure, about so, the Excel, sorry. Yes, Katie, Katie asked me, sorry. yes. In the financial model, uh, I didn't, maybe I didn't, uh, I didn't found it, but, where do you dictate the loan amount from the cash flow? Like you did NOI minus. Uh... Okay, let let's I'll bring it up again. So over here, the, the the first year, the first year, it's always gonna be the LTV gonna come up with the purchase price. It has nothing to do with has nothing to do with value. Assuming that the value is still there, yeah. Assuming that it's worth at least four point nine million dollar, the bank gonna look at it, gonna look. And the purchase price has a value, okay? Mm -hmm. When I'm doing a refinance, the bank gonna look at it as NOI divided by cap rate. So when I look at value here, what I did is financial model G9. If you're gonna go to financial model to the tab, financial model, and you go to G9, what you'll see is that is NOI. So NOI, Look here, NOI, let me, NOI divided by assumption M3. What is assumption M3? Cap rate. Give me value. Okay. Is, did that answer your question? Um, not sure. And that's how you and and that's how you get the the value yield in the financial model. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Could you could you put the financial model for a second? Financial model, the the IRR are going to be a calculation of how much money the investor put and how much money they got back over the years. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. So basically what you do is IRR gonna be how much money, you see B22, how much money they put and all the cash flow stream over the years, I'm gonna give you IRR. So it's not a, by the way, IRR, if somebody doesn't understand the concept of IRR, can go back to my YouTube. There is an explanation about uh, what is IRR and how, how does it work, but it's not an average. Our IRR, 
take into consideration how much money did you get, but also when did you get it? So let's say I give you $43,000 year one, and I'm giving you 43,000 year, uh, 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 exactly the same amount year seven, it's not the same for calculation because the faster you get it, it worked more because you got it early. Okay? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Katie, you wanted to ask me something about the LLC before. Katie? Yeah, no, my question was totally different. I, I was asking, I was just wondering uh, what would be your collateral for your investors, but that was like out of place question. No, it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's a good question. Okay, so let's talk about collateral. It has nothing to do with Excel, but let's talk about collateral for two seconds. Okay, so there were not many collaterals that you can, you can give. So either you can owe directly the property, which is if I'm buying a property under my name, the collateral is the property, okay? Uh, Correct, but the problem is that if you're if you're taking finances and it's under your name, you cannot no, quit claim it or do anything to give it no, to the no. investor. One second. I can own it under my name, and then I can own it under LLC, which is a company, and then the mm -hmm. collateral. Okay, so the property is the owner of the property is the LLC. I own the LLC, so the collateral is the ownership of the company that own the LLC. Right, so um, all the assets. Sorry. Just throwing it out there because I had uh, several properties that were owned by my LLCs was free and clear, and we took uh, mortgages on them, and they made us put. I guess it's depending on on the lender, uh, but it was big banks, and they made us put the quit claim uh, the property to um, a personal name, and the loan would be under a person, and they wouldn't let um, an LLC own the property. I'm going to guess what type of property was it? What type of property was it? What type of property did you finance? No, it was, it was a single family. All of them were single family. It's a different story. It's a different animal. I see. Okay. Yeah. Property this size, this, I don't do the property this size. 99% uh, of them is under LLCs. The bank do it under LLCs. This is a non recourse loan, so you don't have a personal guarantee to it anyway. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a business, so you need to look at it's a different animal. And the, and the collateral is the ownership. You own the company that own the asset. This is how it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any more questions, guys? Ladies? No. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm going to go and drink a lot of water now. Next uh, week, we have Yona Yon uh, Weiss. If you guys don't know who Yona Weiss is, uh, good enough reason to come. Yona is going to explain to us about cost segregation, which is a way to defer taxes. Uh, defer mm -hmm. taxes mean that we are pushing it. We're not canceling it. We are pushing it, but that increase our cash flow uh, especially the first years of the uh, of the deal, we can uh, uh, we can increase. Uh, uh, and he's a, the guy is a champion. Uh, he's really a champion. The guy knows what he's talking about. Um, uh, he was a guest on 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 uh, uh, bigger pockets uh, recently. The guy knows what he's talking about. He's a very nice guy, uh, and he's gonna. I'm gonna ask him. He's gonna be a guest next week. So you guys uh, hopefully gonna join us. I think you're gonna have a lot to, to learn from him. Uh, and if there is any more question, feel free to uh, uh, send me an email or text or whatever it is. Whoever is on our WhatsApp, know my number. Uh, and hey, Todd. What? Is there any way we can, you know, I wanna play with some of the stuff when that you posted in Excel. There's a few things that I've learned today about Excel. Is there any way you have a skeleton version of it I can, I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you. I'll talk about it a lot. I'll tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you like this. Because I've, I've been asked many times uh, to send my Excel to somebody, uh, to to people. People ask me many times to ask their Excel, and it's not like this is like such a a, 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 a a secret Excel. Obviously, I put it on the for everybody to see. 
But what I learned over time is, is uh, that if I give it to somebody, if they don't have the motivation to learn, then later on what happened is that there is a mistake and they don't know how to deal with it. And if I make them build them themselves, now they know the inside of the Excel and then they know also to recognize it. But I'll make you a deal. I will send you the Excel, a skeleton one, so you can play with it. Whoever wants, I will send it to them. But this is a deal and it's, a, it's an honorable deal. You need to donate at least 20 dollars to a charity, whatever what you want. I'm not asking, I'm not nothing. I'm not asking if you did it, it's an honorable thing. I'll say 100%. It, you ask me, to, it's on you, at least $20, whatever charity you want. Done. You get it, I'll send it to you by email. Plus okay, one. Guys. What? <laughs> Plus one over here. Okay, so I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna remember. So whoever wants it later on, Send it to me, send me an email, send out, please send me the, the, the skeleton uh, Excel, I will send it to you. Uh, uh, but keep in mind guys, this is a deal, at least $20 per person. So you guys need to afford it. Uh, $40, whatever charity you guys sure. want, Israel, United States, I don't care. $20 per person uh, for a charity uh, once you get the Excel. It's on you, I'm not asking if you did it for me, okay? Great. If you want to watch this uh, again, I take me a day or two. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube account. Uh, I'm going to send you an email, everybody, with a link to my YouTube, and you can uh, watch this one and uh, this recording and the other recordings we have. We have many of them. Uh, hopefully, you guys are going to enjoy it. All right? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.